this last year, when you may recall over Philadelphia, a Southwest 737 had a major engine malfunction that punctured a hole in the fuselage and killed a woman who was nearly sucked out of the aircraft. Well, what wasn't as well reported was that two years prior, that same engine type and that same airline, Southwest, same aircraft type, 737, also had an uncontained engine failure. But in 2016, there were no injuries and there were no fatalities. Instead of the FAA stepping in and saying, we need to, you know, have all of these engine blades inspected on this engine type, on all of the carriers that are operating it, the FAA asked the industry, what would you like to do? How long would you like to take to look at this? And the, and the industry dragged its heels, not surprisingly, and said, we need more time. Two years later, in 2018, there was a fatality. And then two days after that, last April 2018, two days after that woman was killed, the FAA issued what's called an AD, an airworthiness directive. That's what should have been issued in 2016, or that death wouldn't have happened. So we have seen this time and again. And, and you mentioned attention all passengers. My book, much of the book, about a third of it, is devoted to the issue of the FAA oversight of airline maintenance. We could easily talk about it for two or three more days. But the, the bottom line is that the entire model of how the airline industry works in the United States has been changed dramatically in the last 15 years or so. All airlines in the United States, without question, all of them in 2019, outsource some or most or, or just about all of their maintenance, what they call heavy maintenance. Much of it is done outside of the United States, El Salvador, Mexico, Brazil, China, Singapore. Again, we're talking about U.S. airlines. And although the FAA, on paper, says there is one standard for maintenance of U.S. airlines, the reality is there isn't. There are waivers given all the time so that when the work is done outside the United States, there are waivers so that there are no security background checks. There are no uh, alcohol and drug screening programs put in place. And in fact, many, in some cases most, of the technicians cannot even be called mechanics because they're not licensed. They're not licensed as they are required as they're required to be uh, in the U.S. So basically, you have you have two sets of rules. You have one that's for in-house airline employees and another for the outsource facilities. And this all leads back to the FAA. I have sat in a room with FAA admin, uh, senior officials and asked them about this, and they say that they don't think it's a problem. 